All right, our uh, afternoon session starts with Elia Roy speaking on non smooth spaces with Ricci curvature bounded from above. Thank, thank you very much for this introduction. Today, in this short talk, uh, I would like to talk about synthetic notions of uh, rich curvature bounded from below in the abstract setting of metric measure spaces. Let me start by briefly recalling the notion, the, the, the standard notion of curvature given a Riemannian manifold of dimension n. The curvature tensor is uh, given by the following identity, is the following complicated fourth order tensor, which involves two derivatives and it takes a two vector field and gives back uh, one vector field. In the Euclidean, in the flat Euclidean space, this object is identically equal to zero. Uh, a right way to interpret this object, to interpret this object is as the Hessian of the metric. This is just a moral interpretation because the actual Hessian of the metric is equal to zero basically by definition. The Ricci tensor is then obtained by tracing out the curvature tensor and uh, uh, having in mind the, the, the interpretation of the first of the curvature tensor as the action of the metric is quite natural to uh, interpret the Ricci tensor as the Laplacian of the metric. The Ricci tensor plays a very important role in geometrical analysis. Uh, it is uh, of special importance the class of manifolds with a lower bound on the Ricci curvature. There are indeed several analytical and structural results for this class of manifolds. And one of these results is of particular interest for my talk. It is the famous uh, Gromov compactness theorem, which uh, has opened the door for the study of uh, non smooth spaces with uh, uh, rich curvature bounded from below. The statement of Gromov theorem is the following given uh, a sequence of manifolds, uh, satisfying the following uniform bounds. We have uh, a uniform upper bound on the dimension, a uniform lower bound on the curvature, and a, uni a uniform upper, um, upper bound on the diameter, but this is actually uh, not so important for uh, the sake of this talk. Then given any such a sequence, we can extract a subsequence which converges in the, uh, with respect to the gromov hausdorff distance. The gromov hausdorff distance is a distance uh, for metric spaces. Uh, it is a natural generalization of the um, well-known hausdorff, hausdorff dis distance for uh, um, compact subsets of the Euclidean space. Here, I'm denoting by dk the natural distance, uh, the, the, the natural Riemannian distance associated to the metric uh, gk. And the limit here is uh, uh, just uh, a priori, is just uh, a metric, a geodesic metric space. Any such an object is called Ricci limit space. Uh, the first thing one can prove is that, uh, in general, these objects are not smooth. Uh, this is actually quite natural. Indeed, uh, this gromov hausdorff uh, distance, this, this gromov hausdorff convergence is a kind of C0 convergence, no derivative are involved, and uh, it is therefore quite unnatural to expect some first order or second order structure to be preserved in the limit. Nevertheless, uh, a deep theory uh, developed by Chir and Colding in the 90s uh, shows that uh, rich limits enjoy a lot of analytical and geometrical property which are uh, uh, typical of uh, Riemannian manifolds with rich curvature bounds from below. This is quite interesting since uh, we have uh, uh, objects which are not smooth enough to define a rich tensor, but still they enjoy several properties uh, of spaces with bounded rich from below. And this has given rise to a very natural question that has been explicitly uh, uh, written in one of the uh, fundamental papers by Chicken and Golding. This question asks whether or not uh, um, it's, there exists a notion of a synthetic notion of uh, rich curvature bounded from below for uh, metric spaces or metric measure spaces which do not uh, rely on a smooth on a smoothing se on, a, on a sequence of smooth spaces converging on the, on our metric space and uh, the answer of this question has give uh, has been given quite recently 
and uh, it has been provided by the so-called RCD theory, which is based on tools coming from the optimal transport theory. Um, before uh, giving uh, uh, a rough idea of this RCD notion, I would like to present a motivating result. Uh, this is a theorem of the student for NS, which, has, which is based on uh, previous works of uh, Otto Villani and Cordero Rasken and Mechanism of Slager. This theorem gives a characterization of uh, smooth spaces with uh, a non negative Ricci curvature in terms of the following uh, uh, convexity type condition, which is a little bit complicated. Let me try to explain it. Uh, here we are uh, looking at the curve of probability measures, parameterized in the interval 0, 1, uh, which are absolutely continuous with respect to the natural volume measure in the uh, smooth manifold M. Here, vol denotes uh, the natural volume measure over M and which are W2 geodesics. W2 geodesics just mean uh, geodesic in a metric sense with respect to a W2 distance, which is, the dis which is the distance coming from the optimal transport problem. Uh, I don't want to give details on uh, uh, the definition on, on this W2 distance. I would like just to convey the idea that uh, this theorem provides a characterization of a second order condition, such as uh, uh, the condition one, in terms of a completely no smooth condition. Indeed, here I'm asking for convexity of this function, that is nothing but uh, the Shannon entropy, along this curve of measures. And in order to define these objects, uh, we just need a distance and uh, uh, an ambient measure. And in particular, this condition can be one can ask this condition starting from any metric measure space. The idea behind the notion of RCD spaces is just take the second point of this theorem as a definition. And this is, this is the uh, idea of definition, uh, starting from a complete and separable metric measure space. Uh, we say that it is RCD KN if it satisfies two conditions. The first one is precisely a generalization of a point two in the, in the previous theorem. Uh, this is the so-called uh, curvature dimension condition. Here, K stands for a lower bound on the Ricci curvature and N is the upper bound on the dimension. Uh, this condition has been formulated in this abstract setting by independently by Lot, Villani, and Sturm. Uh, the second condition is the so-called infinitesimal Hilbertianity introduced by Gigi. Uh, I don't want to enter into details in this condition. Let me just is, say is that... K, K, is a quadri K is a tensor. Is it, is it positive or any... K. The yeah, lower bound K. that you keep on imposing. K it, can be negative. Can be negative. Okay. Can be negative, yes. When K is equal to zero, we are asking for convexity. Where yeah. K is a, a real number, we are asking for K convexity. Uh, when n is equal to infinity is actual k convexity and convexity where n uh, when n is a finite integer finite number a real number uh, the condition is a kind of nonlinear convexity it's not really convexity but this is this is just okay, technical yes. okay and the second condition aims at uh, ruling out any uh, Fislerian structure Pro, the problem is the CDK, the CDKN condition alone allows for for Fislerian structures. For instance, the Euclidean space of dimension D endowed with any norm turns out to be a CD zero D space. Uh, adding this infinitesimal libertianity, we are excluding any norm which is not induced by the scalar product. Okay, coupling these two conditions, we have this class of varsity spaces. R in the definition stands for Riemannian, since they are Riemannian-like spaces with a curvature dimension condition. And this class is quite rich. Uh, of course, the notion is coherent with the smooth notion, and therefore we have a smooth manifold, the correct uh, curvature dimension bounds uh, belong to this class. The class of Ricci limit uh, uh, belongs to this uh, this class of RCD spaces. This is related to the fact that uh, these RCD condition, the RCD, con the RCD condition is stable with respect to the Grom of Hausdorff convergence. And finally, the, the class of Alexandrov spaces, uh, spaces with the sectional curvature bounded from below. 
uh, turns out to be also uh, a subspace of the RCD spaces, and this is a result, uh, a result of Petroni. Uh, this is the rough definition. Uh, in the last 10 years, uh, a lot of analytical and geometrical results have been proven for this class of spaces. Of course, I don't have time to give uh, a complete overview of the result in these fields. Uh, I would like to conclude this short talk just by presenting an example of a structure theorem for these RCD spaces and a couple of open problems. Uh, this is a result obtained by after the work of many authors and the last step in this result uh, that was the so-called the constancy of the dimension step has been done by uh, myself in collaboration with uh, my colleague Daniele Semola and this uh, structural result says the following uh, starting from any RCD KN space one can find an integer small n uh, called the essential dimension, which has to be understood as the real dimension of our space. Recall that uh, capital N is just an upper bound on the dimension. You can also find a set R of N, which is the set of regular point of dimension N, which satisfies the following properties. Uh, first of all, this set is big in the sense that uh, uh, it covers almost all the space. Uh, the complement of, of this set is negligible with respect to the ambient measure M. Moreover, the set enjoys a regularity property. Uh, it is NM rectifiable. Uh, roughly, it means that uh, uh, far, for, far from a, neg a negligible set, uh, RN uh, is a bi-older manifold of dimension N. And finally, we have also a structural result for the, for the uh, ambient measure M. When restricted to, the, to this regular set, uh, uh, this measure is equal to the Hausdorff measure of dimension n times uh, a given density. And here, the Hausdorff, uh, the Hausdorff measure of dimension n really plays the role of the volume measure over uh, the regular set. This is uh, a general structure result which is completely analog to the one proven by Chigar and Kolding for the class uh, of uh, rich limit spaces. There are, of course, many other structural results. Uh, we have also structural results for co-dimension one sets like boundary sets of finite perimeters. But I think this is uh, enough to uh, get a feeling of the structure of these spaces. Let me say, let me just present the three open problems uh, which I find really interesting. The first one regards the cast of a synthetic notion of having bounded Ricci curvature. Uh, there are uh, very beautiful results uh, in the setting of uh, limits of manifolds with bounded Ricci curvature. Uh, there are some analytic um, characterization of this condition, but as far as I know, nowadays no, we do not have uh, a good synthetic notion uh, for metric spaces with bounded Ricci curvature. Another question is whether uh, rich, um, RCD spaces uh, can um, coincide with uh, Ricci limits. Uh, in this regard, we have some example, but the picture is uh, quite unclear to date. And uh, the, last, uh, the last question regards the structure of the bed set, the so-called singular set. Uh, there are very uh, sharp results obtained recently by uh, Chiger, Zhang, and Neighbor for what uh, uh, concerns the structure of the singular sets of uh, uh, non-collapsed uh, Ricci limits, but uh, uh, in, in the general setting of RCD spaces and uh, possibly collapsing Ricci limit spaces, almost nothing is known about the set test. In particular, uh, we do not know, uh, uh, we do not have a good estimate of the Hausdorff dimension of this uh, bad set S. Okay, uh, I think I'm gonna stop here. Thank you for your attention. Are there any questions for the speaker? Could you give some example of what kind of singularity develop? Uh, there are um, conic singularities, cones are RC spaces. Uh, manifold with boundary, if uh, boundary points can be considered like uh, singular points 
uh, are RCD spaces when the second fundamental form is positive. And in the non-collapsed setting, uh, uh, basically cons over manifolds are uh, the prototype of singular spaces. In the collapsed setting, the situation is uh, uh, it's quite complicated. And uh, so actually we do, we do not know whether tangents uh, uh, to these spaces are cons. Uh, so in general, they are not cons. Uh, so I think uh, a, a good singularity to have in mind is uh, the tip of a cone over a manifold. What is the biggest dimension of, of, a, of a singular set that you know? Yes, uh, in the in the non in the um, non collapsed setting, uh, the, the, the one may have a singular set of co-dimension one, which is the basically can be understood as the boundary of the space. And uh, uh, the if one forget about uh, uh, boundary, uh, the big the the other singular set is the one of co-dimension two. For instance, uh, a cone over uh, over a manifold of dimension one, over a yes, over yes. And that's and, that's expected yeah. to be the, the biggest. Is that what? You yeah, say? yeah. In the in the the non collapsed setting, it is the biggest one. In the collapsed setting, we do not have uh, really any estimate. So there is a, a a trivial bound on the Hausdorff dimension, which is capital N. It has been refined in the setting of Ricci limit space, uh, Ricci limit spaces, if I remember well, and the bound is n minus one, capital N minus one. But uh, so the, the, the natural conjecture is that uh, uh, the dimension of the singular set should be smaller than small n, the essential dimension. And an integer. Sorry? Should it be an integer? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the natural conjecture is a uh, small n minus two or small n minus one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. But this, this is very far from being true. In Any other questions for the speaker? Right, let's thank the speaker again.